Hello and welcome to my F123 My Team Career Mode here today for part 42 Head of the Italian Grand Prix So it's Max Verstappen on pole alongside Lando Norris Red Bull's first pole of the season Then it's Leclerc and Brown Gasly and Oscar Piastri George Russell and Valtteri Bottas Joe and Alan Stroll round out the top 10 Then it's Alonso and Hamilton Ocon and Yuki Tsunoda Albon and Sainz Fittipaldi and Halga, Lawson and Logan Sargent and on the final row of the grid is the two houses headed by Nick De Vries. So we're here on the grid then ahead of the Grand Prix, a lot sunnier than it was last time out in Belgium. Due to this being our home Grand Prix as a team, we have come with this special livery just for this weekend. I hope you like it. But we're starting the race P4. This is the lap that took us to B4 you can see here we were down in the third sector purple in the middle sector but it wasn't enough so we will start the race P4 so let's get to it then as the five red lights come on ahead of the Italian Grand Prix and we're racing here in Monza and we've got a great start already up into P3 P2 and side by side with Max Verstappen to take the lead before we even get to turn one into turn one though we've locked up we've gone wide we've gone into the side of Max Verstappen we've gone through the gravel Max has gone through the gravel Charles Leclerc leads in his Ferrari from Gasly from George Russell Max Verstappen's gone from pole all the way to stone dead last because of us but we we'll ignore that bit but we we'll we'll somehow stayed P4 after going through the gravel as we tried to find some sort of grip as we came back onto the racetrack we just ahead of the two McLarens but at the end of the first lap and it is all kicking off here the two McLarens trying to get past us Piastri is trying to re overtake Lewis Hamilton there and it's all kicking off there's so much going on here the two McLarens side by side Bottas is still ahead as well but it is Lando who stays ahead of Joe for now this is Gasly and George Russell battling for P2 in the race Gasly fends the Mercedes off for now but most importantly for the crowd the Ferrari leads here at Monza that's what the Defoe came to see can Charles Leclerc do it for the second time in his career as George is still hunting down Gasly, he's made a mistake in that scourge again. He locks up on straight on and opened the door for George and his Mercedes. But Gasly isn't done yet trying to re overtake the Mercedes, but it's too far back going into the Parabolica or the cave for Alberto, as it has been renamed to a couple of years ago. Now that Gasly has the slipstream. He's getting closer and closer and closer and he pulls the outside and he's just got his nose ahead of the Mercedes going down into the first chicane George Lowe holds around the outside Gasly can't get the exit to overtake the Mercedes but now we've got a great exit off the turn 2 we've slipstream Gasly, we've passed Gasly and now our championship rival on the entire George Russell we've gone from 4th to 2nd in just 4 corners there we're up into P2 now can we get after Charles Leclerc we could really do with another win we close the gap massively to George last time out in Belgium with our win and George's retirement but we're battling George once again down the straight into the garage again George Rover takes us now for P2 we didn't have the pace of the Ferrari Charles Leclerc was just getting away George is through but we're getting closer and closer and closer to him as we head down the straight we're gonna pull to the inside but even for me he's too far up the road that may be it for George but hopefully not we're very close to him though coming out of the first chicane and then we head round the curve of Grande we're getting close we're going to go to the outside of Georgia now keep it pinned around the outside and the second chicane what a move that one is but 
George isn't having any of it. Lap 5 to the outside of this garage again. We push him. Give him a little nudge. George has to back out of it. And now he's left vulnerable to the Alpine and to McLaren's out wide. Behind him, George is going back in down, down the pit straight. Gasly is getting involved on the other team. McLaren's finding another way to go wheel to wheel with each other into the first she came we've gone a bit deep though we've gone deep the mclaren of joe has overtaken gasly there through the curve of grande george again closer and closer to us he's gonna try and go to the outside but we close it the door firmly shut the lap sinks once again here comes george as we head down the back straight underneath the old track towards the Iscari chicane George is on the inside of us we hold around the outside we're nearly sideways going through the Iscari chicane there and that's given us a back end six and now George has got another opportunity to overtake us in this Grand Prix into the Parabolica George gets us Joey tries to get round our outside, we push him wide, Gasly back past the McLaren. George now up the right, Gasly now is seeing a chance to try and re overtake us and get himself back on the podium. He's up the inside, we're gonna hold it around the outside, we do. Hold it around the outside, Gasly's still down on the outside. And to get away, and now Esteban Ocon. Ocon in the other Alpine was also having a good race but now he's facing the wrong way at turn one now Oscar Piastri has finally found a way past Lewis Hamilton around the outside of the second chicane Gas Ocon still there spun round at the first corner he finally got going again and this is a replay of what happened to Ocon going down into the first corner He's side by side with an Aston Martin, he's nearly lit it up. Coming through the first corner and then he's proper lit it up. Coming out of the second corner, so I think he was always going around there. Not sure what he was doing. But we've run a bit wide. George has brought the DRS and he has bolted now, unfortunately. As we're wheel to wheel with Gasly once again. Gasly though retakes the pace. The McLaren's having a go at us round the outside. There's contact with Pierre Gasly a bit of his front wing goes flying off into the air he hits our rear tyre we may have a puncture but I think we may have just got away with it Gasly got front wing damage the two McLarens going wheel to wheel once again in this race and it's Joe who holds around the outside of, the, of Lando Norris to keep the pace and at the end of that lap here Gasly he's into the pits for a new front wing and it was looking fairly decent for Alpine but in the matter of what two laps three laps it's all gone wrong for them and both of them are at the back meanwhile lap 12 the race leader knows no drown for him Charles Leclerc into the pits for his one and only stop of the day hopefully he comes out of the pits but Ferrari have put him in quite a bit of traffic. He was around 12 seconds up the road. He was just building the gap out to George and us really. George was about 5 seconds up the road. You can see the gap there. He was just pulling away. But on to the end of lap 12. And we are going to box now for our one and only stop of the day. If everything goes according to plan. We don't get any late safety cars or anything like that. It's been trundled down the pit lane. We've been falling into the pits by Lando Norris and his McLaren. And onto the medium tyres we shall go now. Okay, let's go now. And back into the fast lane of the pits. And um, back out onto the track. And we've come out behind the Haas. But most importantly, if we ever take the Haas, it's a fairly healthy gap because those two in front are, have got to pit so the Haas so them now towards the end of the, of the lap we've caught Magnussen he's gone defensive to the inside and he has pretty much waved through there 
but we're past Magnuson. And now let's see if we can build a gap over Lando Norris as a second place and George Russell into the pits now for his one of those Now have has the undercut work? Have we got closer to the Mercedes? And really it's sort of stayed about the same as we come down into the first corner. George is gone. You see the gap there around three, four seconds. And we are now just trying to break the DRS from Lando Norris. But that was becoming an issue, especially now because Lando's alongside us and Lando's ahead of us. We cut back into his slipstream. We're going to try and go back down the inside, but too risky that. And we don't want to lose too much time to George. Think about the long game. Monday has the pace over us clearly, so let's just try and stay in his DRS. And hopefully he pulls us along and up to the back of George Russell. Is the car we really need to beat today. Heading down the, the pit straight, lap 17, 10 to go. And now we're getting closer and closer and closer to Lando Norris, but we're just a little bit too far back. Out of the first again. Can we get a little bit closer? Maybe greater move down the second DRS straight. And now we're getting closer and closer and closer to Lando Norris. But we've got gearbox issues, says Mark, but apparently that's terminal. We've retired the gearbox issue despite Mark saying it was minor. It's turned out to be much bigger as we pull over and out of the Italian Grand Prix. And that's one thing we didn't need to happen. Surely we could continue, but we couldn't and we're out. It's a thoroughly deserved win here in Italy after another excellent Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, time management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit, familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. So that's been your Italian Grand Prix. Did the Fossi get a Ferrari win this season with Charles Leclerc after us wiping ourselves and Max out at the first corner and the waves parting like Moses for Charles Leclerc? He never looked back and won. George Russell comes home for P2, Lando Norris P3, Oscar Piastri, good result for him, gets P3. Four. That's a good result. His best result so far. P10 last time out in um, Belgium for us. It's a good result for him. But for us, retirement again. I mean, Mark literally said minimum gearbox issues, and the game decides to retire us. And there's nothing we can do about that once the game's decided that. So the same thing happened all the way back in season one of this career mode, if you remember back to um, Cota when we had the issue and then that created the big crash and in Mexico as well we had the issue same sort of issue with the gearbox going as well and that may have really hurt our championship chance really you can see the gap now 41 points it was 17 after Spa when we won and really close the gap after Georgia DNF but roles have really reversed here at Monza 41 points is a big gap to overturn so there is still seven races to go but I feel like our stronger tracks have gone now like the Canada's Spa's here in Monza so 
this championship could well be slipping away right now we may have to enter god mode if we want to keep this number one on our car very much road reversed from this time last season in terms of constructors then it is mercedes who have a very healthy lead now even though we get into it last time out in belgium after their double dnf in the race they've managed to pull it back out now after that result for them see the gap now 108 points that's a big overhaul if we want to win the constructors that's been your italian grand prix then i hope you enjoyed it it's a very disappointing race for us it may turn out to be a defining race very frustrating we needed a decent result we haven't got it we go to singapore next and i'll see you then goodbye